So really, you really were a blue coat, weren't you? I was a blue coat, yeah, at the place you showed, which was next door to Hesham Nuclear Power Station. <laughs> I got sent there because I was I worked at a really good one in, in Yarmouth, Great Yarmouth, got sacked, which is another story. And then uh, was sacked and then and what was for? sent to we'll move on to that in a minute. But uh, <laughs> you sent to this one. Sent to that one as a sort of punishment. It was like uh, you you're going to Morecambe to do six months. Because you have just You've just done something which chicken. What had you, you know, done? Well, something that was considered cheeky in the seventies but now is illegal. <laughs> Oh, what? Uh, <laughs> no, yes. it, it was actually an incident where it was my first attempt at stand-up comedy. And uh, what happened was I, I'd always wanted to do stand-up comedy. I didn't have the guts to do it. I got very drunk. I had a go at doing it as a blue coat. My mate said to me, just copy all the other comedians at Pontins and steal their jokes and basically talk to the front row. So you're supposed to say, where are you from? They say Scotland. You say, who paid for your holiday? Where are you from? Wales. You make a noise like a sheep. Rubbish jokes, right? <laughs> But I said, that's terrible. He said, don't worry, you're just padding. What you're doing is you're looking for comedy gold, which is, where are you from? They say Kent, and you say, what did you call me? Right? <laughs> now, at Pontins, this used to take the roof off, right? <laughs> so I tried it, but I was very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so I go on stage, and I say, where are you from? This bloke says, Scotland. I can't remember the joke. <laughs> say hello <laughs> then I said to the to, where are you from the guy says Wales I'd black out and I go hi <laughs> I panic and then I say anyone in from Kent <laughs> and this bloke shouts out me <laughs> It's darker, but actually, this yeah. isn't darker. It's more romantic, I would say. Yeah, I think that's probably true. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, but there, there's probably more sex in it, which. <laughs> <laughs> more sex. More... Yeah. <laughs> Jamie doesn't speak. No. <laughs> I make I make noises. Like... <laughs> I make like. <laughs> American accented <laughs> noises throughout. Um, no, there's, oh, yeah, that's there's... actually a question though. Do they let you do that? I mean, like when you're when it's you're doing to, the scenes, yeah. does the director say more vocalization? Or uh, do they say I mean, less? There's often, or like... there's often self <laughs> There's often like, it's like, there's like ah! and they're like, no, that's not that's not good. Yeah. Yeah. No one comes like that. <laughs> <laughs> There's some scenes. There's some scenes where they will play music, maybe a bit of. If it's a wide shot and it's not like a, it, so, it's the closest we get to sort of kind of sort of just sort of going for it in one piece, um, and they'll play music or something. And my temptation is always just to try to make the coda laugh. So sometimes I'll do things like when there's a moment where I'm meant to, you know, orgasm. I'll be like, do 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> See, people do that. Wait, <laughs> which, by the way, if they don't, they should. It's like a Ryanair flight when a Ryanair flight lands. Like, do 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 do. And was it nice of you this time? Because last time it was you and sort of everyone else was a, was a, a woman, the director and everybody. Yeah. But th this time it's a it's a man directing. Does that it make is. a difference? Uh, no, not really. To be honest, I mean, I think whoever is uh, tasked with directing those kind of scenes, I mean, you know, the, these guys know it, the sex scenes are awkward anyway, and it, it just needs a, a very. <laughs> this is why I love him. <laughs> Because he includes me in, yeah, you know, <laughs> these guys know sex scenes are just really hard. It's like, no, babe. <laughs> no. Have you ever done a sex scene? No. What? <laughs> We've been in so many films. I know, somebody, but somebody it, no, at some no, point. No, 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 no. Not in Back in the Hobbit? No. <laughs> <laughs> 
There might have been a couple of people under that habit, but nothing. <laughs> no, 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 no. What? Is that, was that your decision? No. <laughs> This is based on your life. I mean, this is things... Yeah, but... I mean... <laughs> loosely, Graham. No, but things like, isn't the washing machine... That happened to you. What? The, the washing. You were very hungover. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Graham, tell Tony Foster that story. <laughs> All their stories are really cool, though, Graham. When I was teaching, which is what this show is based on, I, I went home one weekend, and I was in my 30s. I was probably 33 years of age. I went home to see my uh, mother, and then I went back. And while I was at home, my mother did my washing for me, because I was only 33. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went back. And on the, on the Sunday night, I got really drunk, uh, and then I, I went for a curry. And then the next day, I went into school. I'm going to. I went into school, and it was a school in Slough, and it was a, quite a rough school, but they had a really brilliant hearing-impaired department, so there were he hearing-impaired kids who, uh, you know, struggled. Mm. They, were, they were really looked after in the school. Anyway, I was really hungover. I went there, and about break time, I felt really uncomfortable. I thought, something's not right, you know? <laughs> so I went to the toilet, and I pulled my trousers down, and uh, uh, some of my mother's knickers had got... <laughs> I got mixed up in the wash she'd done, <laughs> and I was wearing my mother's underwear. <laughs> and I went, oh, God, oh, no! Oh, I remember going, oh, you loser, this is <laughs> such a low point, you fucking loser. <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then, the curry and the booze... <laughs> the curry and the booze kicked in from the night before. <laughs> so I... I, ha I did, like, a faecal Jackson Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> and I started, I started going, oh, God, not this, not this as well. Oh, Jesus. So I cleaned myself up and I pulled my mother's pants back up. <laughs> and I went back into the um, classroom and I saw one of the hearing impaired kids just looking at me like this. <laughs> and that's when I remembered that my, I had a microphone directly... <laughs> So maybe man down isn't that far fetched. Right? <laughs> and John, for you, obviously, lovely that Emily wants to be in the film. Absolutely. But yeah. as a director, is it then weird giving your life partner notes? It, it was weird because I was very nervous about it, to be honest. I think we both were. Yeah. Before we started shooting, she said, Are you nervous? And I said, I'm terrified. And she said, Oh, good, me too. Um, I think it's one of those things where people think because we're both in the same business, we have the same experiences. But I've actually never been on set with her, seen how she worked. I'd heard she was a diva, and I just <laughs> 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 oh, I crunch, can't huh? get Emily out of her trailer, stuff like yeah. that. It's like, ugh. <laughs> and um, no, but it, I think what it was is, and it, it sounds really sappy, but it's true. I think it's the greatest collaboration I've ever had in my career. I, I've never seen her work. And when you are actually in the room and she does what she does, it honestly, it changes the air in the room. Everyone is just completely and totally stunned by what she does. Oh, that's See how I don't know who you are. to learn early on in our oh, that's relationship true. was that British people are notoriously terrible at taking compliments. Would you agree? Just like... Uh, <laughs> like, it's kind of like, a, no, it's not talk over. Oh, that's, that's actually what she did. We first met, and I was like, well, I just want to get out of the way. I'm a huge fan of yours. And she uh, went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> you weren't cool at all. There was none of that, actually, uh, I don't know your work. You were a proper fan of it. Oh, I was, I was full stalker status, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, hey, you want to go out on a date with me? <laughs> no, tell um, people, how many, is this true? How many times have you seen Devil Wears Prada? I mean... Not 75. Give or take... 72. <laughs> yeah. No, I, it's one of those things that back in the day, us elderly people used to channel surf. <laughs> and um, no one does that What's anymore. That? But yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, so I mean, cruel. Um, <laughs> no, it's just one of those movies that whatever, whenever you're going through the channels, you just stop and you. I mean, look. Has anyone seen the film here? Probably. Um, <laughs> do you know that there's, <laughs> there's a sort of montage sequence where Annie Hathaway's got numerous fabulous outfits that they yeah. go through. And John, one day, I came home and he was watching it. 
And, and he was watching the montage bit and he goes, and that's my favorite outfit. <laughs> Well, I couldn't get Annie, and so I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Snoop Dogg has a new album, Bush. And a very sexy bit of PR is, of course, that uh, the mighty Pharrell, he co-wrote... Did he write, co-wrote all the songs? He produced the whole album. Produced the whole album? Yes, sir. Wow. Now, is it true that Pharrell, he was the one encouraging you to be a bit more family-friendly, a bit more mainstream with Yeah, it? yeah, he... Made me change certain words. I, I had a song called So Many Holes. He made it So Many Pros. <laughs> <laughs> well, that certainly toned it down. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't pros just prostitutes? No, they're professionals. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies in the video still look quite like hoes. <laughs> they're, they're professional. <laughs> They're in a video. <laughs> and then, Pharrell, is it true that he... I mean, I'm sure he enjoyed working with you, but he did have some difficulties working with you as well. Yeah, when we were um, working on a particular song called California Roll, um, Stevie Wonder had came up to the studio and Pharrell had called a second-hand contact from being in the studio with me, and he kind of froze. He didn't know how to produce anymore. He was stuck. He was like... You might, have, you might have to explain what the... Yes. So, uh, Pharrell was in an environment created by Snoop. <laughs> <laughs> Pharrell was no longer the same Pharrell. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. He was, he was now someone else. <laughs> he, he, was not, he was not the greatest producer speak. in the world. He, he wasn't was, the greatest producer in the world. He was just speak. a guy in the room. <laughs> <laughs> So was Stevie Wonder trying to talk to him? Stevie Wonder was in the mic booth, and you know Stevie can't see, so Stevie was waiting on some direction. <laughs> and Pharrell wasn't giving him no direction, so Stevie was just in there just... <laughs> this is weird, and don't answer this question if you don't want to, Patrick. Okay. But I have... <laughs> I don't know why you brought this up, but I did hear you discuss that you had an extraordinary disagreement uh, with your wife about yourself. Do you know what I'm talking about? By myself, you mean... Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, uh, listen, yes. listen, I do know um, this story. I do not know listen this Listen with story. interest. Uh, well, <laughs> one night, as you do, we were talking about stuff. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I just happened to mention... And, of course, being circumcised, I said... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they were chatting. They're married. They're married. They're allowed. <laughs> and she said... She said, you're not circumcised. I said, what do you mean? You've only known me a few... I, I, all my life. I remember my mother telling me. Why? Because it was fashionable at the time. She said, you're not circumcised. I said, that's ridiculous. I should know if I'm circumcised. <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> End of conversation. But the next day, I happened to be seeing my doctor. <laughs> for... Are you OK? <laughs> <laughs> I, I... I was seeing my doctor for my annual physical. Of course. So, uh, while he was down there... <laughs> I said... Uh, Excuse me, Tom. Oh, oh, by the way, uh, Irv, um, <laughs> the, my wife and I had a little disagreement. Um, <clears throat> I, I am circumcised, <laughs> aren't I? Because she says I'm not. And he goes... <laughs> not! <laughs> He said, no, 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 it's not possible. So he looked down again and he said, hey, I'm Jewish. I know the difference. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is a bizarre story. Too much of <laughs> it. <laughs> I have grandchildren. <laughs> You're going to have to change your Facebook status now. <laughs> No more beef stew. <laughs> well, there's more beef stew. Because <laughs> when uh, you were starting off in, in wrestling, you had a persona that, am I right, was sort of half man, half machine. Was that yes, the idea? Yes, that's correct. Yes. It this was, was prototype. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, you, uh, you want to try to find a persona, or here's some more inside baseball for it, a gimmick 
Oh. Where is a, is a, it describes you as a character, so like when you walk out, people notice you, and they kind of, you can describe your character. But in, these are not gimmicks, These this is real. Well, well, I mean, if they work, it's, yes. But you kind of, it's, it's a it's trial is, and error process with a lot of errors. And, uh, and my first try was uh, the prototype, which was half man and half machine, and 100% crap. <laughs> Half a machine. How did you demonstrate you were a machine? Well, I I used this ability to talk rather monotone and would say things authoritative. And just when I said I would kick your ass at the fairgrounds on Sunday, I would rewind it and say it again for you. Is the only thing they say I would kick your ass at the fairgrounds? Yes. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> you no. <laughs> Oh, it didn't. That's a good but, but, one. Yeah, but, but, but it worked on one. I have one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in. You found but... huge success as John Cena. Imagine that. I figure I need to come up with some sort of name. Yeah, look, every, doesn't every, every wrestler has a name? Yes, it? and people think that, like, hey, man, how'd you make up the name John Cena? I was like, no, dude, I would have made up, like, Dick Hammerbush or something cool like that. <laughs> <laughs> or something, I don't know. <laughs> That's a star. No one's moving from there. No one's letting you go out with that. No. <laughs> but uh, they actually think that John Cena is a, a gimmick name. But no, that's actually <laughs> through all the, the presentation that is WWE. I'm and, stuck and, with John Cena. Are you a wrestling fan, Jamie? I used to love wrestling uh, when we were much younger, about the same time as Transformers back in the day. We had Big Daddy, yeah. Yeah. the Giant Haystack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, no, I used to love it. I thought it was just fantastic. By the way, I'm John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> all, these, all these awesome names. <laughs> you know, the ultimate drooler or, like, no, nothing. Yeah. And John wrestlers Cena. like to have uh, signature moves, I think. Yes. And one of yours is the, you can't see me. But That's that, correct. Is that true that came out of your family somehow? Yeah, I was, I was dared to do it. So I was actually making the music for my own theme song that you just so heard and finally serenaded me to. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and we played it for my brother. And the first time he heard it, this was uh, the, the uh, 50 Cents crew uh, had a, a really popular song called In the Club. And he heard it the first time, and instead of dancing, like he was our litmus test to see what songs were good and what songs were bad, he did this. Oh my God. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, no, everybody does this, man. Everybody does this. And I guess this was from 50 Cents video. And he's like, you won't do it on TV. I said, what the hell do I gotta lose? What are you gonna do, fire me? Of course I'll do it on TV. <laughs> but instead of doing this, I did this. <laughs> and now, for 15 years, <laughs> because of a dare, <laughs> I've been doing this. <laughs> and I'll do you one better. People actually think I'm invisible. There will be people <laughs> to look at this couch and be like, why is there nobody next to McConaughey? <laughs> we said John Cena would be there, but we can't see him. <laughs> so, you, you never know. You remember Hacksaw Jim Duggan and do? King Kong Bundy yes. and Skandar Act yeah. bars and Von Erics. Care Von Erics and Carry the Claw? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got kicked this out of Hearst Coliseum. We're talking Texas wrestling. I get kicked yeah. out of Hearst Coliseum in Shreveport for pelting Skandar Akbar with a bag of tomatoes on the eighth row. Skandar Akbar was a man dressed as a sheik that used to throw fire. Yes. And he managed King Kong Bundy, who yes. was like 484 pounds. And I remember the missing link from single... Parts Unknown. Yeah. And, oh, remember yeah, the green oh. face, Ooh. spit green mist. They sound really good. Good stuff. Yeah. It's, it's entertaining. It was so much it's fun. And, and I'm John Cena. <laughs> but he's got King this. Kong Bundy. Yeah. 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 Hello. Hi. What's your name? Uh, James. James. Lovely James. And what do you do? Uh, I'm a civil servant. A civil servant, lovely. In London here? Uh, yes, in London. And you, are you from the London area? Uh, no, I live in London, but I'm originally from um, Suffolk. Oh. oh. Yeah, mate. It's a Suffolk massive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is he mentioned in the song? Probably, yeah. Oh. What, what school did you go to? Um, so, <laughs> I went to Brandeston. Oh, sweet, yeah. I went, I went to primary school. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we pro did we know each other? Yeah. Did we? <laughs> Let me say, James. Hello, yeah. James. Yes. Me. That's the one. What the fuck? <laughs> do you do? He was my best mate growing up. Yeah. You're kidding. <laughs> my best mate growing up. 
And now you're talking to him on a monitor. I'm not, <laughs> not having my specs, and he's like, Oh my god! Oh, can we not flip him and just get him out of here? And yeah, yeah. Him yeah. Him well, the well, well, do you have a story, or do you? Well, yeah, I did, but it's up please to you. let it be about Ed. <laughs> it's about Ed. Oh, okay, right. okay. okay. Tell, cool. tell your story, then we'll flip you, and then. Sit with you. <laughs> uh, okay, tell, tell the story. Tell the story. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, as, as Ed was this saying, this is when so we were... random, mate. This <laughs> yeah, is so random. I know, it's really weird. Um, yeah, when we were younger, Ed used to come around to my house, and yeah, like you're saying, we used to be quite good mates. Um, and I remember one time. One time he was coming around for tea, um, and I'd forgotten to tell Mum he, he was a vegetarian, um, at that point, anyway. And um, so Mum cooked, I think, a sausage and mash for tea, um, and Ed said, you know, after the meal, these are the best sausages I've ever tasted, you know, where did you get them from? And Mum had to lie, because she had no clue. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, <laughs> that, that 16 that years first, later, I'm first really time, sorry. First time I ever had meat, and also the first time I ever watched a Simpsons episode was around your house yeah. as well. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. We're going to flip you now, and then uh, no, come in. We, we can be reunited backstage. Okay, okay. okay. Put, put, put him on the couch. Oh, okay, okay. There he goes. There he goes. Uh, bring him up, bring him on. He wants to meet him. This is, I feel like Silla Black on Surprise, Surprise. <laughs> there he is. Come on. Will you just, will you, will you just say it randomly? Uh, I don't know, some guy you know. Have, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat, do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One of the things you can do is you can conjure up uh, people's fears. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. So you, you're afraid of quite basic things. You I'm yourself. afraid of like most things, like anything high risk. I'm terrified of. But, but those are rational fears. Okay, irrational is like spiders, because but they actually, um, I become paralyzed when I when I have a spider in my room. Really? Yeah. I like wish I were tougher than that, but I'm not. Okay. <laughs> now, Mark Ruffalo, were you serious when you told us what your fear is? I mean, it is a, it's a good fear. It's a, I think it's a founded fear. I think it's a founded fear. It is. Tell us what it is. Um, I have a phobia of being chased around with poop on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> it's, That's fair. It, yeah, it's... I wouldn't say... I'd say we've all got that fear. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one that goes, it, no, I'm up for that. It's, <laughs> it started when I was a kid. <laughs> was this weird it's parenting? No. <laughs> For some reason, kids thought it was funny to stick a stick in dog poop and chase each other around with it. <laughs> but that scared the crap out of me. Because of the cleanliness problem of it? Like no, because it's poop. Germs? <laughs> it just does <laughs> poop. Because it's afraid of sticks. <laughs> Jeremy Renner, though, <laughs> yours is brilliantly specific, and I think we, pro I think, without is. knowing it, I think we probably all share it. We, we may. I don't know. I, I didn't have the, the fear when I was younger, because we've all, we all go through this, but it's when uh, a little child, and I'm the, I'm the oldest of seven kids, and I got a lot of little rugrats running around, and they, these little roaches start losing their teeth. And they get a little wiggly, and they like to show me like this little dagger flipping in and out of their mouth. And like, look, Uncle Jeremy, I want to pull this thing out. I'm like, I get out of here! You're freaking me out. <laughs> but don't you think that is really freaky? Are you? you it's like I mean, her thumb. <laughs> it's just weird. Yeah. It's just, again. Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. It just really yeah. kind of grosses me out. The cutest little thing on the planet starts to do like the creepiest thing on the planet. And I'm like, get out of here. And like, here, tie the string to my thing to the doorknob. I'm like, get out of here, creep. <laughs> disgusting animal. Oh, yeah, this stage. That's huh? now. No! <laughs> now! <laughs> little ones running around, flipping their little fake their teeth falling out. Look, we all have this, you know, when you're, you're, you have the dreams, your teeth fall out. I don't know what it means. Does anybody know what it means? We get bigger ones. <laughs> no, we have bad dreams. We have... Oh, Am I the only uh, one that has bad no, dreams? No, weird. A friend, of mine, a friend of mine does have that dream too. I yes, had just a friend of yours. Yeah, not me. Not what does you? that mean? I think that's I don't something know. to do with I don't know. Fear this is strange. Fear of money, I think. I think that's what the teeth Who has fear out. of money? <laughs> maybe I'm, maybe I'm anything. just afraid of my teeth fucking falling out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, Josh, what are your fear? What are you afraid of? Well, I was gonna go with flying, but I think I'll go with um, girls shit. over twelve.
felt terrible. <laughs> I, I don't know what came over me. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> the last minute of my life, I wouldn't have predicted that. <laughs> How was it? Mark Ruffalo. You're not going to believe what he said to me. <laughs> but he was bang on the money. <laughs> oh, He's a very oh, perceptive man. <laughs> oh. It was the Dora poem. <laughs> Don't try and justify it. <laughs> Do you know what? I've always hated the Hulk. He's shit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make him angry. Yeah, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry, Ruffalo. <laughs> I, my son said that to me the other day when he was mad at me. <laughs> oh, what, no. that you wouldn't like him? I always hated the Hulk. I think he's shit. <laughs> <laughs> and you just told him that he was afraid of girls over 12. <laughs> <laughs> For him, that would be OK. <laughs> <laughs> he's a child. Oh. Hi, Ev. Hi, what's your name? My name's Sebastian. Sebastian? Yeah. And where are you from? I'm from Newcastle. Newcastle? OK. Do you live there or here? Uh, I live in Newcastle, yeah. OK. All right, off you go with the story, Sebastian. Well, uh, many moons ago, um, uh, I actually went to school in Newcastle, um, and there was a disco coming up. Uh, there was a really popular girl at school, um, the usual sort of scenario, all the, all the, you know, all the guys after her. Um, I sort of waited to the last moment, last couple of days, um, and asked a girl, one of this popular girl in question, if she'd like to go with me. She said yes, and this was literally, the, I think, the day before the disco. Um, uh, lo and behold, the, it turns out that she was actually going to go with somebody else, um, and that other person was actually Charlie. Sebastian Lippiat! <laughs> That's the one, man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know! <laughs> they're, they're very same, yes, you know who it is. Wow. You know, at the time... You look older at, than at the me. Time, I was <laughs> <very awesome. laughs> We're the same, same age. age. <laughs> <laughs> and did you end up marrying Rachel Gould? Uh, no, not yet, no. Not OK. <laughs> There's still time. There is, well, you, know, yeah. you don't happen to have a sword with you, do you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you, could, you could have revenge if you want to. Do you want to? There you go. <laughs> We thought we'd seen you play everything, but first witch. <laughs> Mostly bitches. But... <laughs> yes, my first witch. But you, I hear you went through a phase of you got offered a lot of witches. When I was 40, when I turned 40, I was offered three witches in one year. Oh. And it was sending me a signal, I felt, <laughs> about Hollywood and how they felt about people turning 40. You know? <laughs> so I felt uh, bad, and, I, I, and it made me sort of... I had a, like a little, my backup, you know, and so no, I didn't want to play them. So <laughs> a lot's changed in the last five years for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. good, yeah. Mark. Good. <laughs> oh. 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 You were right. Nice smell. Nice smell. I was looking I for an excuse all oh. night. Yeah. That scene in episode one, the doctor's thing. Yeah. Did that really happen? Yeah. I, my mum will kill me for telling this because it was my our, our, <laughs> our family doctors and I, I he'd been our family my doctor since I was a child and I, but I went as an adult because I, I was there was something wrong with my bum. I, when you said bum, you looked at me directly in the eyes and I'm, sorry, un, I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm aroused and unnerved in okay. equal measure. <laughs> there was something, but there on. was something wrong with my. And I was, uh, I said, there's this thing wrong with my bum, and he went, okay. And I went, so, what do you think? He goes, well, it'll probably be all right. <laughs> and I said, well, I'd, it, I would really like it. I, I'd like you to just, if you could make me feel better about, if I feel better that it will be all right. And he went, it, I'm, it'll probably clear itself up. And I said, yeah, but is there any way I could be sure? And he went, ah, oh, you want me to put my finger up there, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, not if it's not medically necessary. <laughs> And the other, I, 
think, I mean, maybe, maybe there's a reason, but what is the reason that you film it in the school you used to teach in? I think it's therapy, probably. <laughs> I'm in the actual classroom where I taught, because I was, just to keep the theme going, a real teacher for a long time, yeah. I taught for, yeah, for six years in the school that we film it, in the classroom that I'm going mad in. And I, that's, but that's weird. That was my classroom, yeah. But you did it for such a long... Did you ever enjoy it? Was there ever a moment when you thought, oh, I like this? Uh, no. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've met some very nice people there. And the kids must have liked you. You were nominated for Teacher of the Year, weren't you? Yes, I was, Graham. <laughs> you were! I was. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, yes. I've told this story many times. <laughs> but uh, Teacher of the Year is a very prestigious award that's taken very seriously and rightly by the hard-working teaching community. And my head teacher called me in and he was wetting himself laughing. <laughs> in fact, he couldn't stop laughing for the first ten minutes. And he went... I went, what... Why have you called me here? He goes, you've been numb. <laughs> you've been numb. <laughs> I've got this a Teacher of the Year award. You've been nominated. <laughs> and I went, oh, OK. And um, it was by a very sweet girl called Gemma, who I've humiliated many times. And it's a six-page document that people have to fill in <laughs> for the reasons why you should be nominated for Teacher of the Year. It was blank, <laughs> uh, aside from one sentence that she'd written on it, which was of the reasons why you think he should be Teacher of the Year, and she'd written, he's a well-good laugh and he don't make us do no work. <laughs> <laughs> well, your character's name is Dr Smolder Bravestone. Yes. And uh, so all the characters have strengths. Uh, yes. So one of your strengths is the smolder. An actual smolder, yes. yes. It just takes over uh, and I have no control of it. And did you know you could smolder? Like, did you kind of think, yeah, <laughs> I, when, you, when you read it, did you got to go, oh, yeah, I'll do my smolder? You know? <laughs> I take you. Is great. that it? No, no, it didn't come yet. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. That, that literally is where it came from. That what you're seeing, and this is why he looked at me because it's so frustrating. Just go ahead, tell tell a story about your stupid smoke. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, as we're developing the script and thinking, well, what could be a fun thing? Well, what if a fun thing, one of the fun things was he, he has this ability to smolder and it just takes over him. He has no control of it. Uh, and, uh, and it's just one of those things, Graham, that the, God delivered, I signed for it. And, then, and, then, and just do it. And every, everyone likes it and everyone loves it except one individual. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what it is, okay? Now, we, we, are, we are very close. We are very close as friends. And, you know, in this position, he's a producer on the film. So sometimes I, I just bit my tongue. So this idea came up from a producer like mentality. Well, like, oh, you know what would be great for this character? Well, I know, I know. If, if he smoldered. And I was like, what? You know, <laughs> like, you know, if he did a thing. And I was like, what that got to do with that being like in the game? You don't have to he's say like, it like that. A, he's like, it's a thing. Right. And he's like, and then he brought it back. He was like, my mom used to do it to me when I was, when I was over the mountains. <laughs> to him, because he brought it back. <laughs> Everything got tied back to Hawaii. That's how he did oh, it, Graham. Well, the proof is, can, can we see a smolder? Can we see a smolder? Oh, I'll, oh, I'd be happy God. to. Great, sit back for a second. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Can we have a little music? Maybe something that's a little ominous? Maybe, okay, Whoa. here we go. Wow. Yes. Okay, okay here we go. You ladies. can do it to me if I you can want. Be, I, yes. <laughs> Get ready. Here we go. That's why you are who you are, bro. <laughs> That's why. Like, Kevin, obviously, you're like not just a stand up, you're like a stand up superstar. You sell yes. out arenas all over the world. The best of our time. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Our time. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but what's nice to know is 
it mm. wasn't always like that. Mm. Oh, no. Like, no. Uh, what, did, what, was it, what did you perform at? You performed at a seafood festival? I mean, which, which, <laughs> which shit show you want to know about? That time zone. It was always, I think they wanted, was it crab? I had a, I had a crab fest. That <laughs> <formed up. laughs> Listen, what you, is that? In the beginning of the stand-up comedy, <laughs> you're not you're not performing in in luxury you know venues. They, mm. Wherever they feel that they can build the stage and make money is where you're going. So there was a crab fest. <laughs> <laughs> they was like, we're gonna book some talent, <laughs> some comedian talent. And I was like, all right, well you know I'm available. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever tried to tell a joke while people cracking crabs. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the best environment. At all. I mean, Literally, the frustration that comes from not being able to open a crab is still. And if you're not funny at the same time, the stuff that you hear. I remember hearing a woman, oh an older lady, who was like, she was cracking crabs. Because <laughs> this is how you crack crabs. <laughs> Looking at me, and she's like cracking a crab. And I tell a joke, and the joke doesn't work. And I remember this lady just going, oh no. <laughs> I would much rather be booed. The, dis <laughs> the disappointment that came from her voice and then, oh no. She said, baby, it was like, oh no, baby. As, as if I made a mistake with my choice of life. Like, like I'm not doing it wrong. I, I mean, you know, look, the, 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 the hardship that I went through has helped. I helped build me into the person I am today to where I, I can take so much. But I, I've been through it all. I was, I was hit in the face with a buffalo wing. Uh, <laughs> I performed at a... Don't perform a, around food. No, no, no. no <laughs> when we go to my shows now, there's no food <laughs> uh, it was a, it was a It was actually a male strip club that they oh shut down for comedy for the first half. So it was, like, it was a bunch of... It was ladies in there, and, you know, it was just supposed to be us performing for these women that were riled up. First thing, I got on stage when they introduced me, and this lady was like, pull it out! I said, hey, hey! <laughs> Hey, hey, that's not me. I'm not here for that. I'm here to entertain. These are jokes. I, I know who's got kids. I start, I start trying to merge into kid material. And there's one dude from the back. I just remember this dude from the back. He was like, that's enough. And he just, he just threw a buffalo wing at me. And it landed. Hit me, hit me in the cheek. A little bit of sauce. Got like right here. Buffalo sauce is hot. So I start... I assumed that it was a woman with a deep voice, so I was like, who threw it? Who threw it? Because at the end of the day, I'm a man. I'm a man first. Don't disrespect me. <laughs> he stood up. He was like, I did it. And I, I contemplated just taking my clothes off. I was like, that's, 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 that's the only way to get out I collect, yeah, well, I, I collect um, stuff from movies uh, that, some of the stuff, uh, movies I've done, but really mainly Star Trek memorabilia, because I love Star Trek. <laughs> Have you never been in a Star Trek? No, I've never been in a Star Trek, but I love the original series, so I have... Oh, okay. Like, I have the Gorn head from the original series from the episode Arena, where... I, I know! <laughs> I know, I'm just... I'm, not, I'm just nodding. Oh, the Gorn head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The Gorn head. Okay. I have... <laughs> I have... <laughs> what the fuck is a Gorn head? <laughs> What the Gorn is? The Gorn from Star yes. Trek? We're going to give you the Gorn head. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Okay. Do you have any of the yeah. boulders? Do you have I, any of the boulders? I don't have any of the, the light boulders yeah, made yeah, out of yeah, paper yeah. mache. No, yeah. but I have Spock's ears from. from oh, yeah. oh, they yeah. actually, now they are. Yeah, they're you know what yeah, yeah, we know what they are. They're worth. Yeah, very good. Uh, but on Bridesmaids, you did do a lot of kind of proper bonding on Bridesmaids. Didn't you, didn't you like party nights and stuff? We, th we did a pre... Um, a pre. My, the, my co writer, Annie, and I had the idea to get all the girls together plus the like, script supervisor, wardrobe, just all like the women on the There's film. Like to bond. 40. There I were a lot say. of people. 40 women. Well, yeah. it, was, it was pitched to me as research <laughs> because initially there was a scene where we went to a gentleman's entertainment yeah, parlor. <laughs> or a strip, a strip club. Or a guy's strip, strip club. Oh, a guy's strip club. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 So we, we, got in a, we got a party bus. With a lot of alcohol, we had like a, a lot of booze, weird poles, which I was always like, is that to hang on? Oh, or did it have the disco lights in the bus? Oh yeah. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. yeah. And then we went to we went to a strip club, um, and <laughs> they we did watch the show. They did vignettes. They did vignettes. Uh, which it was there was not like backdraft. Yeah. Like, it wasn't that. They would all come out and like. 
yeah. fireman stuff, and then it was like, <laughs> bang, like everything had the same theme, and everything involved. It seemed like every number had a duster. <laughs> <laughs> they really had a long trench coat to the floor. A lot of equipment. <laughs> but they did do, do you remember the, do you remember the, uh, the Matrix? The Matrix one, yeah. There was, somebody was playing Neo. <laughs> Wonderfully. And, uh, there was a lot of long trenches and guys in suits and everybody had these very cheap glasses on. But I couldn't figure out the one guy had a huge, huge thick rope around his waist and I was like, I have not seen the Matrix in a while. I couldn't figure out. Do you remember? Yes. Couldn't we were all like, what's the rope about? I don't remember a rope in the Matrix. And they're like doing these synchronized dancing. And it's like all this clothes is coming off. And we're like, put it on. <laughs> and it went on and on. I'm still like, I don't get what the rope is about. And then the big move comes where, you know, the bullets come and he does like the back bend. Clearly, this professional dancer <laughs> could not do a back bend. So, so the yeah. big move was like, all of a sudden, it's like, ooh, and somebody off stage is clearly holding the rope. <laughs> Because he was like, go! <laughs> and that was like, that was, yes. I, that was like a stand up moment. A lot of themes. A lot of themes, themes got yeah. there. And now, uh, Saturday Night Live also is a big bonding thing. Now, because, Kristen, do you know Leslie and Kate? Kate, 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 We met. I think we met when I Mastermind. hosted. Oh, no, we, and we did a movie together. Um, then we worked together after that. After that, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, that but now you guys are still in Saturday Night Live, which you, I, yeah. most people I'm sure know, but it's a, it's a big comedy sketch show in, in America. But how long have you, we worked together for how many years now? It's been two. <laughs> after one, right? <laughs> it's been three? Maybe three. I it's been know. three. Um, after the first year, Leslie, and my name is Kate McKinnon, and she, uh, <laughs> I know that, but uh, she, she came up to me and she said, um, after a year of knowing me, um, how, you all right, Kate Middleton? And <laughs> <laughs> were you joking? Uh, no, I was not. And, <laughs> and I was like, McKin, I was like, well, who's Middleton then? She was like, a princess bitch? <laughs> Medicine. I think she's awesome. Oh. Her hair is awesome. <laughs> and, and Kate, you did, some, you did some great characters on Saturday Night Live. You're Justin oh, Bieber. You. Your Justin Bieber is spookily accurate. Thank you so Look at that. Incredible. Like, yes. that is it's incredible. Yeah. Thank you so and did much. You, you've done it in front of him, haven't you? I have not. Oh, you haven't? I have not breached oh. the wall <laughs> yet. Um, I met him before, because he hosted SNL once, and then uh, that was before I started doing an impression of him. But I was so struck by how how this was before he got really beefy for those Calvin Klein ads, and now he looks like, you know, a big beefcake. But um, um, he was really, he was very delicate and he very tender, beautiful, just so, such a beautiful face and such a big, big hat, <laughs> such big clothes, and just the most beautiful. And I, I am a huge fan of his, and I love it. Now, <laughs> you, have a special way of, uh, you have a special way of preparing the face, haven't you? Yes. Um, Yes, you you want to look as though you've done something wrong, but like. Hey, <laughs> 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 very good. So now, how old are you now? Uh, I'm 77, and uh, oh, don't! Uh, they, they, I bet. Oh, don't! All that, I think they applaud because they know they're going to live longer than me. You know, they go, oh, good or, In New York, they applaud because that means there'll be a new apartment on the market soon. <laughs> I hate when people say, like, uh, oh, they're 77 years young. I met Vanessa, uh, Vanessa Feltz, oh, and yeah. she said to me, here's Joan, she's 77 years young, and I want to say, and here's Vanessa, and she's 350 pounds thin. <laughs> And you have to face it. <laughs> and you have these, I've been on this show with some of these older women that still try to look good. No yeah. names, Goldie Hawn. <laughs> and, and she, <laughs> she's my friend. And she says to me, 
would you believe I got a grown-up daughter? And you go, yes! <laughs> and lower your skirt, your nipples are showing. I mean... <laughs> The Goldie Horn booking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, age sucks, and you got to face it. <laughs> but it, it's interesting because America is really so youth obsessed. I mean, how? Oh. And, and, and in the film, you show, you know, kind of that it is hard for a woman of your age to get the jobs. It's beyond difficult. The only jobs really left now for women, unless they get friendly with people to do films. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> The only jobs left are really commercials. I just thank God, my, I made my yearly nut this year on a, a product called Girly, which is for dry vagina. And it's, um, <laughs> is it here yet? <laughs> well, if anyone knows the heartbreak of dry vagina. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was perfect for it. I, camels follow me home. <laughs> <laughs> Three Jewish men are trying to rent my uterus instead of going to Miami. <laughs> but, and there's... But thank God for these commercials. There's one called... An, uh, uh, Zestra, has that come here yet? <laughs> It's like woman's uh, Viagra. Has that happened here yet? It's women's Viagra. And uh, they had this big discussion with me. Should they make it in pill form? This is honest to God truth. It was in the newspapers. Pill form or cream? Because uh, they didn't know which would do better. And they finally decided, these idiots, will do it in cream because if it's in pill form in a bar, a man can drop it in a woman's drink and oh. she won't know it. But if you're in a bar and a guy goes, so where are you from? <laughs> For that commercial too. <laughs> <laughs> so we do another thing. Uh, we loved you as the genie in Aladdin. Oh, that was fun. So we thought we might have our very own genie on the show tonight. Yeah. So uh, is there anyone in the audience who fancies a go at being a genie? <laughs> oh, look at them, they do. Okay, try, try you. Uh, what, what, what's your name? Ewan. Sorry, what? Ewan. Ewan. <laughs> His name is Ewan. <laughs> Ewan, nice to have you here. Thank you. No, no worries. Great to hear you. Tell me. He's quite frightening. I know. <laughs> don't piss off Ewan. OK, so Ewan, don't think of a magic word, right? Something, you know, it's just you, magic word. And that camera three is going to do a kind of zoom crash on you. So, so when I say go, you, the, the, and you'll just do your magic word. OK, so Ewan, go. Hi, Graham. <laughs> I feel like we're in the middle of a telethon right now. <laughs> Ewan has learned to say hi, Graham, thanks to your dollars. <laughs> Please help. <laughs> we'll learn another phrase by the end of the show. <laughs> yes. Should we, should we try another boy? Oh, oh, there's, there's, oh so actually, you're wearing blue already. Let's try you, yeah? OK, so into that camera, your magic... What's your name? Nick. Gnick, OK. <laughs> uh, okay. Friend of Ewan. <laughs> OK. Nick. Number three, and go. Alakazam! <laughs> wow! Whoa. It, it, was almost, it was almost too good. It was a bit like, you're, you're very good at that. Yeah. <laughs> Alakazam! <laughs> Time to dance now! <laughs> I'm gonna dance with you and, and Gnick. <laughs> Alakazam! <laughs> jazz hands, jazz hands, jazz paws! <laughs> Way to go, Gnick! <laughs> Gnick, go! Okay, go, go, go. Follow the, follow the line, wait. There you go, Gnick. There you go. So, uh, I'm just gonna get my genie to help me. Okay, hang on. Oh, yes! Because uh, I forgot all about poor creature. Well, let me... Oh. Okay, <laughs> come on, Nick. Good, Nick. Good. Oh, there he is! Yes! Yay! Uh, ready? I need, I need a lovely, funky DJ console, please. <gasps> Alakazam! Oh! Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Good.
Good work. Good work, Nick. Okay, I'll tell you what. Nick, you, you can come back into the studio. Come back to the studio. You can help us in this thing. Okay, there you go. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> So great. Yeah, right, I'm not <laughs> floating anymore. Thank you. Okay, we go over here to the DJ booth. Right, right here we go, here we go. It's the, it's the Robin and Graham Road Show. Hello, job, sir. Oh, do, oh, it's gloves. Okay, gloves. you go over there now. Well done. So there's a mic there. Now, Nick, well, I've got some music. Nick, but... put a shout out right now. Nick, give it out for the blue people. Nick, gonna keep it real. Get ready for an Alakazam. Alakazam! <laughs> yeah! Oh! Very good. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got a mini jingle, so it's the Robin and Graham Road Show. Can, can you do a jingle, a live jingle for us? Welcome to the Robin and Graham Radio Show! Nicely done. Woo! Very good. Let's back with a big shout out from Nick. Okay, uh, let's, let's start the show. So, uh, good evening, Robin. Good evening, good evening Robin. Graham. Welcome back. Once again, we got some shout outs. I got one going out right now to Stephen Buck. He wants to shout out to Jess, who's a best friend, and he says, Stop texting him. He's not interested. Yay! You're listening to the Robin and Graham Road Show. Alakazam! No, you tit the jingle. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Robin and Graham Radio Show! Yay! Where's, where's Michelle Smith? Where's Michelle Smith? Michelle Smith wants a shout out to Esther, best friend. That bloke you pulled. Don't worry about trying to remember his name. You can do so much better. Yeah! <laughs> Whoa! Where's Marlon? Marlon? Oh, there he is, there's Marlon. Ready, we're going to say, we'd like to shout out to his friend Gregoire. Don't worry, girls love that you have got a third nipple. Whoa! Oh, oh, three nipples. A, B, C, way to go! Show it! Show it! Show it, go on, go on! Show the nipple! I'm not a circus freak, you <laughs> Secondly, I will get my third nipple out on the condition that Robin Williams comes and touches it. <laughs> well, okay. Here we go! Oh. Here we go! <laughs> this better be a real nipple. <laughs> All right, ready? Here we go. Ready? <laughs> ready? Let's see... Oh, please, please let it be a nipple. <laughs> I have a third ball, too. <laughs> ready, ready, here we go. Okay. Oh! Oh! Touch it. I did. Oh, well done, Rob Wow! Wow! Beautiful! Wow! Well done. Chicks really did that. I like that better. I like the fact that some girl's going, you've got another one. <laughs> Play with my third nipple, girl. You've never had fun till you go third. <laughs> Once you touch the third nipple, things get crazy. <laughs> I get two nipples going, but when the third goes, mmm. <laughs> the third nipple goes, and then my fourth penis jumps out. <laughs> I'm like, mmm. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank my guest tonight, the fantastic Mr. Robin Williams. <laughs> Now, Sir Patrick Stewart, and you don't really use the sir much, do you? Uh. <laughs> or should I? Sorry, should I have been calling you? No, I shouldn't. Am I supposed to? No. Okay, but but no. do, do you? I take my lead from Sir Ian, I, whom we've both shared some time with. Yes. And uh, he is he is so phlegmatic about all of that, and and uh, I just you know it's a great honour, but it's not something that I need to press. When you bump into another sir when you're out and about. Do you then... Do you... Do you call each other <laughs> sir? <laughs> well, you sir, know, you, sir. Mu you must sir, roll in sir circles. OK. Circles. Sir circles. <laughs> 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 Yeah. First minute. Can I be the ignorant American and ask, I, so how do you become a sir? Um, 
Well, yeah, Patrick, how? I, I don't... <laughs> uh... Well, you know, it's a case of, um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK, OK, OK. No, no, no. I got mine on the Queen's birthday honours. Mm. But uh, you have reminded me that I did have a Sir encounter only a few weeks ago in Los Angeles. A rather fancy, in fact, extremely fancy restaurant. <laughs> well, tell them uh, what it is, because they'll know. Um, it was the, uh, the, the, the Tower Bar. Uh, Sunset Tower? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. these guys are no, cool. No, no, I'm no, not no, cool. No, 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 say, say, say it again. Look, go, the go, Tower say it. Bar. Oh, man, the Tower oh, Bar. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> No, the towel bar is a spot. I, yeah. I got a feeling this isn't going to work out it's quite the way I'm at. So, we, we had <laughs> four of us were seated at a table <laughs> about 15 minutes later into the restaurant walks Sir Paul McCartney. Wow. Good. Now, okay. Paul and I have a very slender relationship, but it's lasted wow. decades. Okay. Uh, I, I first <laughs> encountered him in 1964. No. When his Ooh. girlfriend, Jane Asher, then uh, told him oh. that I loved Aston Martins. I was driving a battered old Ford, but Aston Martins were my dream car. Mm. She told him this. And one night, yeah, we knew he was seeing the show. There was a knock on my door. And I said, yeah, come in, I'm there in my underwear. Mm. You know, like... As usual. <laughs> well, I always... As you greet people normally. <laughs> I hang around like that, just in the hope. <laughs> so um... come in, I'm in my pants. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I'm ready for you! <laughs> said, oh. Come in! And the door opened, and standing there was Paul McCartney, who I had never met before. And this was 1964. Wow. And uh, he said, Jane says that you're like Aston Martins. Here, drive this. Wow. And he tossed a bunch of keys over That's to me. Cool. And it was an ass. It was his <laughs> ass. Yeah. Amazing. Anyway, do you want to hear the restaurant? Let's keep going, keep okay. going. Okay. We're in, yes. we're in the so fanciest we're, restaurant we're, in LA. Yeah. We're now in the Tower Bar. <laughs> Tower which... Bar? <laughs> 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 I am feeling less and less good about this. Keep going, keep, keep going. going. Okay. You're in there. Uh, so Paul McCartney's come in. I, I You've known him since yeah. the 60s. And uh, uh, he sees me and comes over, and uh, I stand up and say hi, and we have a big hug in the restaurant, and I'm very much aware that there's a, all the tables are full and this kind of thing. And we talk for five or six minutes, and he goes and sits down. Five minutes go by, and into the restaurant, Walks Sir Ringo Starr. I swear to you, I'm, I'm, so I'm not well. making this. <laughs> but were they together? Yeah. They were. They were. Oh, they were at the same table. Well, they were at the same table. Yes. Oh. Well, um, well uh, we we uh, at the tower. At bar. the tower. Bar. At the tower. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I am expecting so many free meals. <laughs> and, um, we finish early, and I get up to go, and Paul stands up to say goodbye, and we have a hug, and as we have a hug. He says into my ear, do you know Ringo? And I said, yeah, of course. Come on. <laughs> I've never met him, but I'm... He said, oh, boy, Ringo, come on, come over here. <laughs> Hang on a minute, he said, Sir Ringo, Sir wow. Patrick, Sir Paul. <laughs> hey, we've got the Knights of the Round Table! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got there. Yeah. You got there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.